Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be talking about XSIM. Now, XSIM is a really cool program that I'm going to show you how to design a crossover in, and I'm also going to show you some tips and tricks for those who already know XSIM. There's some tips and tricks that might make you a little bit more efficient with the program, and there might even be some hidden things in there that you're not aware of. So let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. All right, guys, so this is XSIM. Like I said, we're going to show you a couple different things, but let's go ahead and start off with the basics before we get more advanced. First thing that we're going to do is know that this is a drag and drop style program. So you just drag in and you drop it wherever you want. This right here is your power amplifier. This is where your power is coming from. So we need some drivers to hook up to this. Now, it's important to note that these are just in free space. This is not an indication of where anything is on the baffle. Now we're gonna go ahead and connect all the positive leads. In order to do that, you just hover your mouse over any of these little dots and you'll see this line come up and that allows you to connect things. Anytime you see a dot, that means that there's a connection point there. Now we also need to connect the grounds. So we could do it exactly the same way that we did it with the uh, pauses, but that would just be silly because they have this ground thing right here and we could just click this and anything that this is connected to will go to a common ground on the crossover board or in the crossover. So there's really no reason to do anything other than just drag and drop these. It saves you a lot of space and gets a little confusion out of the way. Now, the next step that we have to do is define these drivers. So in order to define these drivers, we need to tune them. And we're gonna go ahead and import FRD and ZMA files here. So in order to find these, we're gonna go ahead and take some measurements. Now I've already taken these measurements. These are measurements that I've taken both the impedance of and the frequency response with my measurement microphone and DATS. I'll go ahead and link those in the description if you're not sure what I'm talking about. The first real time-saving trick is found in these measurements. So if we go to where we saved our measurements at, for me, this is the file that I, or folder I've saved them at, you're gonna see that I have a FRD and ZMA file. Now the first trick is to go ahead and name those the exact same name. So if you notice, this says beta 10 and this is beta 10, one's an FRD and one's a ZMA file. Same with the JBL, FRD, ZMA, all, all labeled JBL. Now, this isn't gonna save you a lot of time if you're just doing one design, but it's something that if you get in the habit of doing, it's gonna save you a lot of time in the long run. Because when we import this FRD file by just clicking this little folder button, uh, we can just go ahead and hit JBL. Now notice it just shows the FRD file. And when you press open, since they're labeled the exact same thing and they're both in that exact same folder, they're gonna go ahead and populate both the ZMA and the FRD file at once. Saves you quite a bit of time. Now the next time saving tip is, if you don't wanna keep right clicking on these, you can actually just use keyboard shortcuts. So the keyboard shortcut to tune is, believe it or not, just the letter T. So we'll go ahead and hit the letter T We'll import and we'll label this beta 10. All right, so now we have our tweeter and our beta 10 hooked up and we want to go ahead and figure out the Z offset. Now I've shown you how to do this in other programs, but now I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do an XM because you can do it right here in this program. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click curves and we're going to hit get file. Now you're going to want to select a color that's different from the graph. So go ahead and select any color you want and then click OK. Now this is where you should have taken a Z offset measurement, which would have been your tweeter and your midwoofer or midrange in parallel with each other, and you would have got the frequency response graph. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, I'll post a video link up above. Just go ahead and click on that video link. You'll know what I'm talking about. Now we'll go ahead and hit open, and we wanna make sure that these overlap. Now the great thing is it's now overlapped on our graph. We don't have to do anything else but just change our Z offset. Now in order to do that, once again, we're gonna tune the woofer. You could tune also the tweeter. Now, if you're trying to do a keyboard shortcut and it's not working, it's because you don't have that graph selected. So we had this graph selected. So I press T, nothing's gonna happen. But if I click on this graph again, then hit T, it'll pop back up. So don't get confused there. It just means that you just don't have that window in the front. So let's go ahead and start working on this. Now, this is a little bit unique of a situation. Typically, this number is gonna be positive, but in this particular case, my tweeter's actually sitting behind the woofer. So this will actually be a negative. So we'll go ahead and try this. And you can put some numbers in here. You can also um, press this down if you wanna make some minor adjustments, and, uh, and that'll also do it. But look at that, that looks pretty darn good. It looks like we got our measurement right on. So we'll go ahead and close that out. Now that we figured out that Z offset, that's gonna stay in there so we can get rid of this curve graph. 
if you keep it on there, it's just going to get convoluted and get confusing. So let's just click on that from file and then hit remove this curve and that'll be gone. All right, so now let's go ahead and start designing the crossover. So we're going to grab an inductor, we're going to grab a capacitor, we're going to grab another capacitor, and we're going to grab another inductor. Now, I did this on purpose so that uh, these don't necessarily come out the right way. Now, I don't necessarily want to see both my woofer and tweeter response. So what I can do here is go to curves and go to S1 and add that. Now, that is going to... Uh, show you whichever one is labeled S1. In this particular case, the JBL is labeled S1. We're also going to add the curve S2. Do that a different color. We'll do that green. Now, if I just want to work at, on the woofer right now, the easiest thing that I do is I just kind of remove this ground, and then I can start working on the woofer. Now, I'm going to delete this. In order to delete this, you can just hover your mouse on it and hit delete, or you can right-click and delete as well. I'm going to put this here. Now the capacitor, it's in the wrong orientation. I want it in the other orientation. In order to do this, you can right click on it and hit rotate, but the easiest thing really to do, which will save you quite a bit of time, is just press the space bar. If you press the space bar, it just automatically uh, rotates that. It's very fast and pretty simple to do. So let's go ahead and make some adjustments. We'll tune this to, I don't know, a 12. We'll tune this to a two, and we're pretty well set. All right, so that looks pretty good on the woofer side. So let's go ahead and connect the tweeter back up. And we're pretty good here. So let's go ahead and add a resistor. Now, I'm going to add this resistor here because I'm going to show you quite a few cool things here in a minute. And then let's add a second order crossover. Now let's go ahead and add that. And we'll tune these something like that, uh, something like this. That should be OK enough for what we're doing. All right, and so here we go. So we have uh, some stuff uh, populated. We have uh, a resistor here uh, that we're not sure if we need or not. And we have this big dip here. So we got some things going on that look a little off. Now this big dip here actually tells us that we're out of phase, okay? So that means that we need to reverse the polarity of one of our drivers. And in this case, we're going to reverse the polarity of the tweeter. So in order to inverse that polarity, we can do one of two things. We can right click on it and hit invert, or the easier, quicker thing to do is just hover your mouse over the driver you want to invert and hit the I button. When you do that, you can easily invert and you can go back and forth. It makes it much, much easier, especially when you're trying to uh, look at things uh, quickly. Now, this resistor, let's just say we're not sure if we want this resistor on or off. Uh, there's a couple things that you can do with this resistor. Uh, you can, let's actually, let's just show you how to do it. You can tune this resistor, so we'll go ahead and hit tune, and you can see it's got value, open, or short. So open would keep it open, and when you see that when we hit open, it actually removes it from here. Now why did it remove it from here? Well that's because now your power is not connected to your tweeter anymore. We've disconnected it, we've created this open. So you wouldn't use open when it's in line in the positive or when it's in line like that. You just wouldn't do that because it's gonna cut off that. Instead, you would use what they call short. Now what a short does instead is it shorts out the resistor. Now when it shorts out that resistor, it's basically bypassing that resistor like that resistor doesn't even exist. So that's an easy way to short out a resistor to see if you need it or not. Now there are shortcuts to this, and that's one thing that I wanted to show you, is you can just, instead of hitting tune and then go to all that, you can just hit N for normal, S for short, and O for open. Makes it very, very simple to go between the two. Now when you'd use open is anything going to ground. So since this is going to your common ground or this is going to your common ground, you could open these. Now if you do that, you can see the difference between you know keeping it open and keeping it normal. So if you're not sure if you, want it open, you can take a look and see what would happen if you just did a first order versus a second order or whatever. Or maybe you added a capacitor here at the end and you said, all right, I want to take a look at this capacitor and just see, uh, we'll tune it to like a three or something. And I just want to know, you know, what, what it does versus open and, and closed. And there you go. So normal and open. So maybe you'll want that. Maybe you won't want that. You know, this really isn't I'm not really designing a crossover here so much as just kind of showing you the basics of it. So let's go back to this resistor. We're going to put this resistor back in normal, even though uh, it may not be what you want on there. 
because there's a really cool trick here. So right now we're looking at this program, this whole, everything from one watt. Okay, so this is showing us that the amplifier is putting out one watt and it's an eight ohm load from the amplifier. So an eight ohm amplifier putting out one watt from an eight ohm amplifier putting out one watt, we are seeing 95 decibels, okay? What if we wanted to see what it would do with 100 watts? Assuming we know that this speaker can take 100 watts, we're gonna go ahead and put 100 watts in there and click close. And when we do that, now it's gonna show us how much of an SPL increase we have by putting 100 watts in. So instead of being 95 decibels, it's now gonna be closer to 115 decibels. That is pretty darn cool. But that's not the only thing we can do by adding that power here. Now we can also take a look at our resistor. This resistor, since it's in front of the tweeter, is gonna see quite a bit of power. So let's go ahead and add a graph. We'll go to add graph, we'll go to more, we're gonna to go to component power dissipation. This is really good for you to check out on your resistors. One of the questions I get most often is, can I use a 10 watt resistor or what type of wattage resistor do I need? Well, this kind of helps you out. So if you know you're gonna be giving this speaker 100 watts, for example, we'll go ahead and go to curves and we'll add R1. Now, right now, it's off the charts. So we're gonna to need to change the scale. So click on scale and you can change the vertical scale to 20 watts, 50 watts, 10 watts. We'll go ahead and do 10 watts, and there we go. We see that with 100 watts of power, that resistor will see up to basically 30 watts. So instead of using a 10 watt resistor, you might wanna use something like a 30 watt resistor, or use maybe three 10 watt resistors in parallel to get that down to where this won't heat up nearly as much. Here's another thing. Now let's just say that we did wanna take a look at this at the 100 watts, but now we can't see this top end anymore. Well, we can change the scale. So if we go to frequency response, we can change the scale. And you can change the scale, by the way, on any, any of these. So let's go ahead and change the vertical center. So the vertical center would be the center of this graph. Where do you want the center of this graph? So since this is about 115, let's just go ahead and put it at 115. Now you see it moves everything back down and now you can see this high end. So why would you want to change the uh, vertical center? One, if you want to do exactly what we did, or two, maybe you took your measurements at a much lower volume level and you want to be able to center everything. Or maybe you even want to go down and see where your uh, cone breakup is, like on your woofer, how far down is it? Is it far enough out of the response that you're happy with it? Well, then you might actually go the opposite way and vertical center further down so that you can kind of see what's going on on these tail ends of your tweeter and your woofer. So let's also go uh, up here to these curves. And besides the vertical center, another thing that you can do, and we'll actually, you know what, we'll keep it at 90 decibels because we're gonna go ahead and change this back to one watt real quick. So we'll tune this, we'll go one watt, we'll go ahead and hit close. And now we're back to that vertical center that we started with. Now, another thing that you can do is also change the scale. So this is the vertical step size. So this would be um, how close do you want this at, as far as decibels apart. Now most people are gonna be doing between five and three decibels when they're working at it. Some people wanna do 10 decibels because it just makes their crossover look so much better. Uh, you can change it to three to five so you can really see what's going on in here and you can see exactly what's going on in this picture and what you might need to increase or decrease here. All right, what else do we, can we do, well we can change the frequency, the minimum and maximum frequency on the frequency response graph. Now this is really important because let's just say you're working with a subwoofer and you wanna go down to really 20 hertz and the other side, you really don't need 20 kilohertz, you really want more like uh, 200 hertz. Well you can do that and now you can get an idea of what's going on with it. So now you can fine tune your subwoofer if you need to, if you're gonna DSP it or whatever, or maybe you just wanna pay attention to like the crossover region. So maybe you wanna go over to 800 hertz and then you wanna scale over to uh, 2500 hertz. Oops, that's not right, 2500 hertz. And when we do that, then maybe we can take a look at the crossover region and, and actually we would really wanna go more to 3500 in this particular case based on where this is being crossed over now. And we might even change the minimum frequency back to, oh, that was supposed to be 800 hertz, so let's go ahead and change that. 
There you go. And then you get a better idea of what's going on in the crossover region. Are you in phase? Are you not? This is about, I don't know, 90 dB and above it is about 96. So you should be in phase. That's six decibels up. So that's good. You have a decent phase of alignment here. All right. So let's go ahead and reset those back to normal. So let's just kind of show you the final last couple things I think you might want to know with this program. First of all, you can save this. So go ahead and hit File, Save As. You can go back to it. You can edit it. You can change it. Or since you saved that file, you can then send that file to someone else so someone else can look at it. You can go to toidsdiyaudio.com, for example, and go to our forum page, upload it there, and have people take a look at it. You can also do some snapshots. So you can snapshot to a picture file, large as shown, or forum post. And once again, this will only give you the snapshot of the window that you're on though. When you take a snapshot, that's only going to take a snapshot of like the crossover. So if you wanted a snapshot of the crossover, maybe you want to print it out, you can go to file print and print just that out. That way you have that piece of paper with you when you're soldering together your crossover, it makes things much easier. Now an X uh, on the other one, once again, if you want one of the frequency response, once again, you'll hit snapshot. It'll snapshot whatever you have on your window. So right now it would be snapshotting this whole window right here. If I wanted it to be a 10 decibel scale to make it look really cool for someone, we put on 10 decibel scale and you're good to go. And you can snapshot that and send it to whoever you want. Uh, typically, if you want someone to help you with something, you're going to want it to either be 5 or 3 decibel. It makes it a lot easier for them to know what's going on. And same with the impedance graph. You might want to change the vertical scale some to like a 5 or 10 ohm in this particular case. And then, you know, take some pictures, send them to them if you need to. Once again, you can print it or you can snapshot it. You can also export these, uh, either the impedance or the frequency response as ZMA and FRD files if you so please as well. So this is all that I got for you today. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up, like the video, and comment. Uh, comments really do help other people see these videos, and so that's really good. So sharing it as well also works. All right, guys, if you have any questions, any comments, any concerns, throw them down below. And like I said, if you need help, go to toidsdiyaudio.com slash community. We're there to help you guys. All right, guys, this is 123Toid of Toids DIY Audio, and I'm out to make more crossovers, of course. <laughs>